Willie D. Live. What do you think about posterity, posterity pastors? Um, what does that mean? Tell me. I'm, I'm the me in the trouble. ones who preach money, like get to the paper. Put they it like this. They don't really focus If too I much. went to church with my family and I, we were hungry, we didn't eat that well that morning and wasn't that much gas in the car and I turned the ga- car off and the car still because it needed to tune up. But I had faith. And I tell my family, come out. Then I see the pastor ride by in a ooh, green Bentley, coke white interior. Dang, he get out. I can see his jewels glistening. Wow. I can see his Galilee Gal- 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 shoes, Gal- Gator shoes from there. First lady gleaming, looking good. Purse, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rob them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Take off the brace of everything. <laughs> That's what I think of them. <laughs> hey, My family gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> My family gonna eat. We may take their car too. Get out the car too. Hey, fair exchange ain't robbery. Hey, right. l- hey, let's go back to 2007. Okay. 2007. What comes to mind when you? Hear I don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about. No, that. I don't. I don't go okay. back. Right. I don't go back to you know the things that shock my mind. Yeah. And f- me up, and you know, so I don't, I don't even think about that shit. No offense, but you know, my life up and it messed me up. And it actually was a positive thing because it changed my comedy. Yeah. It changed who I was at that moment. And um, so, and uh, Richard Pryor is my idol. And so me and Richard Pryor went to the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so that was my channeling through Richard Pryor. You know, that was Richard Pryor moment. And, yeah. um, I, you know, it was a bad time in my life. And, you know, people want to interview and talk. I don't talk about that bullshit. Right. It's, it's hard to overcome that. You know, still, yeah. I still haven't overcome it. So, you know. Yeah. So right. that's what it is. That's what I, I don't even... With that, I respect that. Yeah, uh, you you have a relationship with Bill Cosby? No. What about what what about um um what am I trying to say? Joe Torrey. You cool with to- Joe Torrey? Joe Torrey, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The niggas sure. who I don't who I don't like, they know it. <laughs> you feel me? It ain't no bullshit. Yeah, I love all those guys. Yeah, I love yeah, I love yeah. Joe, 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 Guy, all of them. Can you talk about this joke stealing thing, man? Well, joke stealing thing, you know, is something. It's so many influenced comedians out there. When you guys was coming up for the example, the rap game, nobody could have took you, your music. It didn't even. It wouldn't even. You guys had your own music, or even just the style. Yeah, just even the style. The style like, yeah, you know, even too too short. Cadence. And you guys were like you talked about the same thing, but two different beats, two different. They ain't didn't nobody. And so these young comedians, the people who want to come on, I know I don't steal material. I write. I write every day. I'm a G, and I like to write. And so these guys want to come in and steal your shit. And they, they, and it, it happens so much. It's like, damn. You know, either you got to defend yourself or you got to let the nigga know that you're going to step to him. You know, and I take it personal. Yeah. You know, I'm going to step to you. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to step to you, bitch. If you're stealing my <laughs> shit, fuck you. Fuck you and your family. That's what I, I ain't lying. You trying to steal my shit? <laughs> F- you. Yeah. And that's the way I, I step to you, you know? And I don't mean it had to be physical. I'm going to step to you. And they all go, oh, blah, 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 blah. I just let motherfuckers know, you know? And that's why I try to write different, try to write unique. They going to steal it. They going to some punk ass motherfuckers always steal your shit. They always got punk ass motherfuckers out here who, are, who wait for you, who sit in there and watch you and then take pieces of your mm. shit. I know. I know I don't steal my. I don't. I don't look at nobody else. I don't. I don't want to see nobody else. I don't look at no other comedians. I don't need to see no other comedians. There was only Richard Pryor to me, you know. My top dogs, Cat Williams, and these dudes. Other than that, you, you know, I, I ain't feeling you. I enjoy you, but I'm not gonna steal. And I don't even. If you going one way, with that's why I never did nothing on COVID. Cause all these niggas, every nigga did something on COVID. Same writing mother. You didn't do one COVID joke? I ain't joke? do, I had one COVID joke. I said, I like the mask, because you can talk shit to your woman. Bitch, <laughs> you bitch. What'd you say? I said, I need to get rich. We need to get rich. <laughs> the only joke I ever did. Because <laughs> everybody was doing it, so I didn't concentrate. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. I ain't had no Obama jokes. Everybody doing Obama jokes. Everybody doing the same Trump joke. Everybody doing the same. So I try to write outside the box so these dudes won't steal. But they still come. I still, I ain't gonna say no names, but I still, I still see my shit pieces, you know, come up. You know, if I if I say something, they'll say it. I I I'm a historian. I read, I I I research, I Google. You tell me about any timeline in American history, I could tell you what was going on and why, what was affected, da da da. And I utilize that, you know, in my act. So, you know, and so you hear little words, I, I'll say something, cornbread, and suddenly they'll just say cornbread. A little, you know? Mm-hmm. So and nothing you can do. It just I, I got to the point where I say, well, f- it. you know, it's flattery, Curry. That means you're the best. These little bitch ass mother stealing your shit, that means you the you the goat. They stealing your shit. But it, it's one thing for a guy to steal s- some material from the little guy. Yeah. But when they try to steal from somebody with a name already, somebody who can defend themselves, who can right. actually, who has a platform to get the word out and let, and put you on blast. That means... Why would somebody take that well, risk? Well, like, like the Steve Harvey thing. I think he might have been doing it just it, bitch move. You know, not, maybe, not maybe stealing my material. You know, I, maybe giving the benefit of the doubt. Maybe one of his writers did it. But they know, they, we all know whose material it is. And I think, it, you know, a tiritive motives. You know, sometimes be a tiritive motive. You know, you never know what a motherfucker took something. He took something, I'm going to take something in here. It ain't about the mm-hmm. money. Mother got enough money. You know what yeah. I mean? So it looks like you want some of me. You want to be me. So therefore, you ain't got enough money. You know, you ain't got yeah. enough money. You want to be me. So I, I look at it like that. That's all right, boy. I'm a G in the game, and you want to be me. You want to, you want, you want my style. You want to see how, how does it feel to be me. That's why I look at it. That's a good point that you made about the writers. I never even thought about that, but yeah. that's true. Like mm-hmm. when you get to the level of a Steve Harvey, mm-hmm. you have writers, mm-hmm. and some of these guys can, you know, steal other people's jokes and then get paid. Give them that. Give give those jokes to some other guy who has a larger platform and get paid for doing that. Right, right. And, and you know, But you know what guy, he's doing. You know what you're doing. But this guy takes the joke un, 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 unsuspectingly. Yeah, and, he, and, he know, he knew. But he he, knew. you're saying he knew. He knew, he knew. I ain't going to play that bullshit game. Yeah. We ain't going to play all that. But I didn't know. Uh, nigga, yes, you did. Stop it. Uh-huh. Stop You want to be me. It ain't about you. may got more money, but you want to be me. What's you the wanna joke? You want to be as smooth as me. You want to wear clothes like me. You can't be as smooth as me, fool. Was, was the joke that he told... One of you, the jokes that you had that was on a major platform, on the major all platform, the, all the way out there. Yes, I did the joke on Comedy Central. Okay, one, one of my Comedy Central specials. Yeah, yes. So anything you say, I can go research it, bitch. Anything you ever told to me, nigga, I, I got, I got a, my first HBO specials, nigga, doing that. I could go to some dude and say, you think you, you, I stole that from you? Look at my HBO special, fool. You mm. got it from me. Where are you right now in your career? Like, what's going on? I'm on tour with Cat Williams. 2023 tour, best tour out. We're destroying them. It's a major tour. We're doing, you know, big centers. You know, Cat give me that platform, and we're destroying them. And mm-hmm. we just crush, kill, destroy. So that's why I'm at my career. I'm a comedian. I want to be a comedian. And I, that's what I am. I'm a comedian first. And then I'm. I, I want to come out with a new sitcom. I've been thinking about that. I said, do I want to come back to TV? Do I want to do this? But it looks so lame out there. I see these shows are so lame. And I did it, excuse me, once. And I retired. I said, I'm done with it. I, I didn't want to come back. I, I I did it. So I said, hmm. So I'm thinking about, you know, coming back to television. How many yeah. hours a day were you putting in on Mr. Cooper? Um, 10, 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Yeah. Oh, so that's not that bad. 10 a.m.? Yeah, I, I to told them. They had me. I, said, I can't get up. I, I would come to work at 1030. I said, I ain't no good. <laughs> yeah. About 1030. Because I've heard stories of guys being in those rooms for, like, in the writers' rooms for, like, 17 hours out of the well, day. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's the writers. But I was more spontaneous and quick. Mm-hmm. So you give me the script, and I I put Mark Curry into the script. And how many days a week did you... Do uh, practice the script uh, uh, every day. When they pay you that much money, we went to work every day, brother. Huh. Every day, and that cry. You look back and say, "Damn!" I Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, block Thursday, and shoot it Friday. 
They made you stay there. We could have did that in one day. I could have shot that show in one day. Mm -hmm. But they made you stay there. I thought, I thought I used to think about that. I said, damn, they made me stay there a week. It just take a week to shoot the show. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. doing any executive producing? Um, right now, um, no. Right now, I'm just on tour. Right now, I'm a comedian. And that's what I like to be. I, I like to be Richard Pryor. I just want to be out there being the funniest dude um, that I could possibly be. And that goes with my mental. When I'm funny, everything else, you know, that's what, that's what my life goes. Mm -hmm. I'm a comedian, so I'm funny. I can do other things. So I'm looking at this sitcom, so I'm right, I wrote it down. I have the basis of it. I will be executive producer, so when I push a sitcom out, if I want to do that, I'm going to figure, do I want to do that? Do I want to do a sitcom? Do I want to go back and do this? I already made history. Do you want to do it again? Do, do you, you know, you know, do you want to do it? movies? Movies ain't, you can't just do movies like it used to be. So sitcom, you know, maybe I'll come back and, and do a sitcom and, and, and shock the world, because what I see out, it's not, I don't see anything funny. I don't watch no show. Me and Martin was funny. I used to watch Martin and die. And I don't see anything like that. I don't mm -hmm. see funny shows, Mark, you know, like Mr. Cooper. Or, I don't see that. So I would love maybe to come back and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe. Yeah. Come maybe be fun. Yeah, the, 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 the funny, funny stuff is few and far between when you watch these comedy shows now these sitcoms they're terrible you watch these sitcoms the jokes the real jokes jokey stuff like that Martin and Cooper yeah. back to back to back because we were comedians and we would put that yeah. influence into the scripts they would give us basic scripts and me and Martin would take it up to another level these people get the scripts and they just read what they hey let's get some coffee honey <laughs> what about pizza you don't like pizza and they read them lines like, oh, my God. <laughs> See, when they gave me them lines like pizza, I said, damn, put some cornbread on that pizza. Let's do this. <laughs> and then, you know, add a little ooh to it. They ever try to make you wear a dress? I did wear a dress one time. Only reason I did it, one time. Only reason I did it. Only reason. I told them I never wear a dress. But it was with Sherman Hemsley. And what, what was the situation? The situation was I wanted Sherman Hemsley... Um, was a landlord or something. And so I had to dress up as a woman to convince him. And it was it was a funny scene. So I said, now, I don't do dresses, homie. But I said, with Sherman Hemsley, I'll do it. Do you regret doing it? No, no, no. Because it was with Sherman Hemsley. He was a legend. And I said, if I could do something funny with him, and and he, he I had to beat him off of me. It was hella funny. And so I didn't, I didn't regret it. That's, that's the only time I did that. Only time. And, and... They, I got a story for the dress story. It's gonna really blow your mind. I, Joanna Man, remember the show, Jawa, mm -hmm. the movie Joanna Man. Yeah, I was up. It was my movie. It was my. It was. It was between me and the Gail Nunez. Right. They said we like you. You know, it's between you and him. So we sitting in there in the makeup room. They said, uh, "With this, this audition, okay, here we go. Uh, you, we got we got to save your eyebrows." I said, "What?" I said, "No, you ain't saving my motherfucking eyebrows." I said, nah, we ain't doing that. Miguel Nunez said, I'll do it. <laughs> he saved his eyebrows and got the part. Yeah. I said, nah. I told him, nah, you ain't, I ain't shaving my eyebrows and I ain't got the part. Nigga, you out of your motherfucking mind, you weird freaks. Do you think there's an agenda to emasculate yes. black men Definitely. in Hollywood? Definitely. You've yeah. seen it. You've seen it. Yes. Yeah. Well, you look, look at the movie Panther. The movie came out, was incredible. Powerful. Shit. That movie was the most incredible movie ever. Look, the, the second one that came out, it wasn't even a black man in the movie. What? You don't think that's imagery? Come on now. That was the most powerful movie you ever seen. A black man vibrant. Like, Damn, what is this? Why do you think Avatar came out and, and, and it stretched three hours? That nigga said, I'm going to put another hour on Avatar so we can blow this shit out. Ain't no, this shit is too powerful. What the fuck is beautiful? Black man, these powerful people, black powerful, come out the next movie, ain't no dudes in the mother movie. What? Yes, come on. Okay, so having said that, why would you allow them to do the dress scene? Why would you do the dress scene? If you know, if you know there's an agenda to, you know, emasculate black men, why would you because get them a get him any ammunition I, it, because my ammunition because you can't I, I had a Teflon vest on 
because I showed my masculinity. I showed who I was. And the reason I had to dress on, I, I wanted to work with Sherman Hemsley. And I thought it would be, I, I loved him and he was physical and he was trying to attack me. And so we was fighting. I said, that, that's funny to me. And when I went in to do that scene, I remember we got into it with the network because they wanted full makeup. Me and the makeup, the dude, the makeup dude, I put the wig on. He said, I said, that's all right, nigga. I ain't doing all that shit. He said, I remember he got to the network, Mark, but they have to put, I said, if I'm the one putting this makeup on in the scene, I wouldn't do it right. I said, give me this guy. I did it my own <laughs> self. They were mad as shit. I remember that. And they wanted to make me up like as a lady. I was like, nah. And if you look at I did the wig like this, let's go. <laughs> and it pissed them off. But so I did it my way. I did it my way. So it didn't it didn't hurt me in any type of way.